very smooth, probably because it's Friday morning, I guess. It's 13 past 11, and uh, yes, time to say good morning to Madonna. How are you this morning? Really ready, well. Ready for the weekend? Certainly are. It's going to be another big weekend, but that's all good. Oh, they're all good, aren't they? They are. Hey, listen, some news that's come out during the week about breast cancer, which I thought we should start on. Because that's right. It's, it's really good news. It, it is. So, of course, scientists around the world are all looking at genes and how we can look at people who actually have genes for specific diseases. Right. So there's been 72 new genes associated with breast cancer that have been found by Australian scientists. Wow. So that's pretty groundbreaking. It'll be about three to five years, they're estimating, probably five until testing's available for all of these. So it's certainly not a done deal yet. We can't go out and get it today. Mm -hmm. In my family, there's a lot of breast cancer. My mum is one of nine girls and several of them have already had breast cancer. Yeah. So, but when they, I think the most recent one was about 12, 15 years ago or something like that. And huh, it was around the time Kylie Minogue had cancer because there's a whole story about that. <laughs> but anyway, whenever it was, at the time, because there, there was such a high proportion of the girls who had had breast cancer, they were looking at the BRCA1, BRCA2 genes. Have you heard of those? No, not really, I haven't. There but... was a whole thing in the news yeah. uh, about BRCA1, BRCA2 genes because that is something that people can be tested for. Right. And basically... The concept was that if you had this gene, then you could choose to have a double mastectomy mm -hmm. and therefore prevent the breast cancer. So it's something that Angelina Jolie did. Yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's one of those things where, you know, if you have a gene, what can you do about it? And obviously that's something that women can choose to do about it. And I, I've been chatting to women this week and it's interesting because a lot of people believe that that's the only option if you've got the gene. So there's a whole science as well called epigenetics, which is what I really wanted to chat about today, because yes, having the gene is one thing, yeah. but epigenetics is the science of what activates those genes. Okay, so, so if uh, in five or seven years' time or whatever, yes. uh, when uh, it, it'll be on a trial, so would the doctors then be able to attack these other 72 they found? which may help the breast cancer? Explain it a little well, bit. Well, it's sort of more along the lines of if women get a group of these genes that they're active for, so they have these genes that predispose them to breast cancer, yep. at this stage, the only option is to do surgery and remove the breasts. So right, that is yep. the medical route at this point. So they could keep an eye on things like estrogen, progesterone in the blood. They could, I suppose, use things like uh, drugs such as that there are things like tamoxifen that stops the build-up of estrogen in the cells. So I suppose from that perspective, they could be doing other preventative drug treatments. So yeah. I suppose that is one of the things that they could do. But you still have to activate the genes. And we've all got, you know, well, once again, this is going back three to five years, so who knows what the numbers are at the moment, but we've all got between 1,000 and 1,500 dodgy genes for mm. different diseases that can be activated throughout our lifetime. Right. Like, for example, with, uh, with the Lawrence Katsaris last week when we were chatting about the dementia, there's a specific gene that they absolutely know that if you have that gene... You're, you're, medically, yeah, yeah. So they say you it. will yeah. get dementia. No, you that's will. what they say medically. They say you will. And that's because when they found that gene in rats, those rats get dementia. Ah, right. They forget where the trap is. Yeah, you know, we're yes. humans. And, and there's, there's other things that we can do. So obviously if we, as humans do think you know and we all know the sort of things uh with dementia that we can do you know it's about keeping your brain active it's mm. about getting sunshine it's about getting exercise it's about eating well there's all of these things that we have total control over yeah so the same thing goes for breast cancer so i was at a another seminar about five six years ago and there was a woman there who at the time she was doing a lot of research into insulin activating the BRCA1 BRCA2 genes so when people's blood sugar is out she was seeing a lot of women coming in who were very young, mm -hmm. who were choosing to remove their breasts because they were positive for the BRCA1, BRCA2 genes. Yeah. And when she was looking at their history, because they had very high insulin and blood sugar levels, they did have a high risk of activating those genes. Right, okay. So, well, so there's a whole concept of, okay, well, if I have the gene, yes, I can remove a body part. Mm. 
but there's also a concept from the other side of epigenetics, which is our lifestyle activating those genes where we do have quite a bit of control. Now, all these new genes that have been found, yes, uh, is this purely for breast cancer or cancer in general? Oh, they're finding all sorts of things. Right. So, for example, scleroderma, it's an autoimmune disease where everything tightens, your ligaments, your muscles, your tendons, and you end up being quite encased in your own body with yeah. ver very little flexibility. Right. They know that under major airports around the world, there are much higher incidences of scleroderma. Mm. So there's a researcher from Israel who basically was going, okay, well, this is interesting. So he sort of was looking at the combination of what the gene is yeah. for scleroderma. And, and when he spoke, he said, if you live underneath an airport and you have this gene, you will develop scleroderma. So don't forget, he's going with the scientific model right. that's looking at a gene plus a toxin equals a disease. Mm. And maybe if you live under an airport, there's... Well, maybe, you know, but yeah, I mean, you know, I guess it's one of those things that you need the proof on it, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. So yeah. because there are these clusters of diseases around the world, that's fantastic for science mm. because they can go, well, that's weird. There's a lot of this particular autoimmune disease or there's a lot of this particular cancer here. And then area. they can look at those particular cancers and go, okay, well, what's the side effect here or the toxin or the... You know what's the active cause right yep yep gotcha and then they can start looking at that particular toxin associated with that particular gene and say okay this plus this equals this because of course sci scientists love a plus b equals c that's <laughs> <laughs> that that's what they love but it doesn't mean that you can't get scleroderma if you don't live under underneath an airport right. you know and having all that toxicity associated with our lives hmm. so so i think that epigenetics is really important because those are the things we have control over. You also have to remember that the three things associated with cancer and chronic disease are inflammation. So is your body inflamed? Do you have signs, you know, like excess fluid or joint pain or even lots of headaches and migraines? Those things are going to be risk factors that may activate genes. Then there's oxidative stress. So that is when you've got more free radical damage, so more damage by toxicity in the body than what your body has the ability to heal. Right, well, we're talking about breast cancer. Yes. Um, now, normally that's a, a topic that's, that's just for, for uh, females. Yes. Right? Males ah. can get breast cancer, can't they? Not only that, but a history of prostate cancer in the family is one of the predispositions to breast cancer. So prostate oh. cancer and breast cancer within family is very much connected as well. Right. So quite often people come in and I say, is there any history of breast cancer? And they say no. And then I ask prostate and there may be prostate yeah. in the family. So because it's all about hormonal toxicity. Right. Yeah. And you know, you hear the words estrogen dependent breast cancer. You've yes. heard that sort of yeah. concept. Mm -hmm. The thing is, estrogen as a hormone isn't bad. It's when the liver isn't metabolizing that it that changes, that estrogen mutates into a form that can be linked in with female cancers. Ah. And the same estrogen can be linked in with men's breast cancer and men's prostate cancer. So tummy fat, so when we've got excess tummy fat, here's, here's one of the links with obesity and breast cancer, prostate mm, cancer. Yep. Tummy fat, if and the numbers are more than 32 and a half inches for women, more than 34 and a half inches for men, around a sucked in tummy. Wow. So, yeah, so yeah. that size waist, if you've got more fat than that on the waist measurement, that fat tissue can convert your testosterone in men into dodgy estrogen or your estrogen in women to a dodgy form of either estrogen or testosterone. Ah, so right. therefore that conversion can actually happen in the fat tissue in the abdomen. Yep. It can also happen in the liver. So, and this will be something women recognize, a good old PMT, which we mentioned last week. Yes. So PMT can go anywhere from one day to 14 days. And I I'm know. sure, yeah. <laughs> and women who have it all month long, trust me, they don't want to be that person either. But it's, it's one of those things that the longer the PMT is, the worse their estrogen metabolism is. Right. So metabolism of a hormone means breaking it down and eliminate, eliminating it from your body. Mm. So if you're having PMT for say seven days, 10 days, two weeks, Right. then it means your liver and your gut really aren't eliminating that hormone. And it can actually be getting more and more toxic as the month goes oh. on. So then by the time we're getting 
uh, by the time that PMT is just getting so bad, you know, no wonder we're in such a mood. <laughs> because, because it really does, it really affects everything. I, I know it does, yes, yeah. I know. And it's, it's, it's something you can't do anything about yeah. what is happening to you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it, it just happens. You, you have no control yeah. over it. And it's not until, you know, you get your period and then you go, oh, that explains my last week. <laughs> oh, that's good, I feel better. Yeah, that's right. The depression lifts, the anxiety lifts, the wanting to kill someone uh, in the next yard lifts. You oh, know, it's good. sort of like it all starts to shift. We ended up on a nice note. We did. We? Well, listen, let's just take a little break and we'll come back and uh, talk more about the breast cancer. Absolutely. Okay, it's 22 past.